You are listening to the Cattle Call Podcast. This is the place where computer-aided design and drafting meets humor and practicality, with a touch of business acumen thrown in for fun. Jim and Rocco, the owners of Zentech Consultants, the premier U.S. technology consulting firm for architecture, engineering, construction, and manufacturing, discuss the fascinating world of CAD with some humor and some honesty. The Cattle Call Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Cattle Call Podcast with Jim and Rocco from Zentech Consultants. I am Jim Coppinger, the technical guy, and with me is my partner, Rocco, who is apparently not the talkative guy. So <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. I think at this point, everybody knows Rocco. You just sit there and Say three words. I mean, you got the easy gig here. How come I have to? Talk I just, a lot? I just like to, to just, just bust on you all the time. Just, can't it blame just you. makes it fun. Can't blame you. I spend the other seven, six days out of the week torturing you. So <laughs> it's, it's fair. I guess I got to live with it. <laughs> all right. So what are we talking about today? Oh, so today we're talking about managing the remote design build workforce. Right, dealing with folks who work for you but don't work in the office nowadays. That's a big topic. Um, so. You know, the, the world has changed quite a lot since uh, Rocco and I were young. And, and and I don't just mean that we don't ride dinosaurs to work anymore, people. Um, it, it's, it's actually, I think, changed dramatically in just this past year, obviously, right? You know, due to the COVID shutdowns and restrictions that everybody's had to face. Um, and, and I don't think, you know, we're not breaking any news here on the, pad, the podcast by saying that we've all had the shift the way that we work and we had to adapt, you know, uh, to new processes along the way. Um now, you know, for, for Rocco and I here at Zentech, right, it really hasn't been a big change, right? And that's because we had built ourselves as a digital company years back when we first started out. I mean, it was always our belief that the day was coming when everybody would begin working remotely and, you know, only visiting, you know, job sites and offices when it was absolutely necessary. And of course, to be fair, right, we never dreamed that it would come down the way that it has, <laughs> Um, you know, we just sort of thought companies would begin seeing the cost benefits and migrate that way um, and not be forced into it, you know, practically overnight. Uh, you know, but with any change, uh, there are challenges to go along with, you know, any of the benefits that you might see. Um, and I think this is particularly true in the design and build environment, right? We have to develop new ways of, of managing our people, ensuring that our work is getting done. Um, and I know, you know, we, we can't rely on, on tried and true management processes, right, when there aren't folks right in front of you to manage anymore. Um, so I think, you know, let's start today with, with what we see happening in, in the design and construction workspace in terms of how our clients are working and, and planning on working as we move ahead. So, Rocco, what are your thoughts here? I mean, what are you hearing on the phone when you're talking with people? Are, are, are companies, are they planning to go back to business as usual as soon as they can, or, or are they seeing the distributed workforce becoming their, their new normal? You know, it, it, it depends on, on the firm. It depends on um, the the management style that, that goes on. But, you know, I think we all know that very large firms are not planning on going back anytime soon, mm -hmm. right? I mean, my, my wife, for one, um, you know, she works for a big financial firm and and they're not talking about going back until at least uh, late late spring at this point. Um, but it, it, you know, there, there's people in, in management who are like, Oh, we, we need to get back here as soon as possible. People aren't getting work done and, and, you know, we, we just got to get back to it. And I don't know that that's the right answer either. So mm -hmm. it, it depends. It's definitely a good mix. Yeah, and I don't know that I agree with that. So, I mean, all of the research that I've been able to find and all the reading that I've done is seeing the exact opposite, that people are being much more productive at home. Um, I think the people, yeah, listen, this is me getting my, my little paranoia hat on here. I think the people who are, are, are spouting that are usually mid-level managers whose job is to just watch other people who don't actually do anything productive and they have nothing to do <laughs> and they're afraid for their job. That's just my, my two cents. Careful, um, Jim. You're going to get the you're going to get the mid-level management people angry. They're not going to follow us anymore. Uh-oh. Ah, that's all right. I annoy everybody anyway. <laughs> so, I annoy you. I annoy my wife. I annoy just about everyone I talk to. So why not the mid-level managers too? <laughs> oh, goodness. All right. So, you know, from my end on the tech side, right, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing what I see is that, you know, a lot of folks are looking towards more of a hybrid version of things moving forward, right? There's 
Um, like I say, I think there's a lot of benefits to people working at home, right? You know, you, you get reduced office and travel overheads, right? For both the company and the employees, you get increased performance outcomes. Um, and, and certainly, you know, the, the employees are getting a better work and life balance, right? Which I really, I honestly believe it leads to happier and more effective employees. Um, you know, I haven't seen a lot of people who plan to stay 100%, you know, remote long term. Uh, but I, I really haven't spoken with anybody who doesn't see that there are some real benefits to letting their people work from home at least, you know, two or three days a week. Um, and, you know, I think on the employee side, right, I think the employees love the additional personal time they get, right? And, and I think the employers are seeing major boosts in output because you know, people are, are actually less distracted and getting more done at home than they ever have in the office. Um, I was reading an article last week, and it was in one of the major, maybe it was like Forbes or something, I don't really remember where it was, um, but they discussed what they were calling the stretch effect. Um, and the idea is that, you know, when a worker on a job site, you know, can complete their task in four hours, all right, they, they stretch it out <laughs> to eight hours because they're, you know, they're not allowed to leave early. All right, or they or they can't go do something else that even seems like non-productive because it angers their coworkers and it takes off their bosses and they get in trouble and everybody sees them as lazy. All right? You know, and 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 they also estimated in this article that, that almost 40% of every workday. And it was regardless of industry, it didn't matter what you do. Everybody's workday. 40% of your time is spent socializing and addressing, you know, non-related work topics. Right? So, you know, when, when people are working from home, they're more apt to finish their work quickly, take a long break, and then they come back and get even more done. So they're really being more productive than they ever have been before. Um, so, so Rocco, you know, looking at us, right, do, do you find that this is true in terms of, of our employees? Um, you know, do, do you think we get more or less productivity out of folks working remotely? Um, and, and do they miss, you know, the, the, the in-person interactions? As far as the, the, the productivity goes, um, I don't know. It's hard to say whether you get more out of people. I think it depends on the individual and how dedicated and focused they are. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think there's a lot of arguments that can be made, you know, one way versus the other. Um, you know, you, you have to be, I also think it depends on, on the kind of person that you are, because if you're somebody who can focus and who doesn't need kind of hand holding, um, then yeah, you could get a lot of work done. But if, if you're somebody who gets distracted easily, or if you're working from a home environment where you have, you know, a three and a four year old, you know, banging at your door, you know, <laughs> daddy, daddy, mommy, mommy, I need this, I need that. In some cases, those, aren't, those aren't three or four year olds. <laughs> some cases, those are 15, 16. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, and, and, and that's it. That's actually a really fair point that you make there. I mean, and, and, and I will say I haven't seen that issue because we are real particular about who we hire, right? And we hire very self-motivated, self-starting people because we know that's what we need in this environment. But you're absolutely right. You know, you got to you got to have uh, personnel who can fit into that, you know, remote mold, who can who you can trust and, and not necessarily trust, but, you know, are, are going to focus and get done what needs to be done. And we're going to talk more about that later. Um, so. So here you go, folks. Surprise, surprise, right? I'm, I'm going to torture Rocco here a little bit. And, and I'm going to bring up an old argument, uh, one that we had when we first opened Zentech. Um, and, and, and we both agreed on starting as a digital-based company, right, with remote employees. Uh, but Rocco is old school, and he was firmly of the opinion that at some point we would grow too big and that we'd need to have a physical office where we could centralize for management purposes and control. Um, he wasn't convinced that a company in our industry could work in a distributed environment with more than just, you know, a handful of employees. Uh, so like I said, Rocco's old school. You know, he still actually makes like phone calls and talks to people and all other such archaic concepts. Um, you know, but the thing is, is that Rocco, he really wasn't a alone in that mindset for, and, and for years I'd consult with, you know, we, we, we consult with people with the workflows and so on. And, and I'd talk to clients and we'd make recommendations on, you know, distributing their workforce, you know, reducing work hours, letting people telecommute. Uh, and the answer would regularly be, you know, that, that can't happen here. Uh, okay, well, now that it has happened <laughs> there and everywhere, I, I, I actually wanted to see, Rocco, if it's changed your thinking at all. Do you... Do, do you still think there's a tipping point where companies need to have, 
an in-person process happening or, or, or do you think it is possible to handle everything remotely? Well, it, it, it's twofold, you know, from a, from a technological, technological standpoint, I think it's totally, and I know, I don't think, I know that it's, it's doable, right? I mean, we're, we're dispersed, you know, in, in multiple states here at, at, at Zentech and, and it works from our phone system to our file sharing system to our CRM system. Um, Thank you. Know, you. The, the tech it, guy must have done a wonderful job it, in setting it up. It, it, let's move on. It works. <laughs> <laughs> it, it works, you know, but from a, from a communication standpoint, from the standpoint of, um, you know, I, I see it all the time and it doesn't just, it goes on internally and externally. You know, people are afraid to pick up the phone. I, I just had somebody internally this week send me an email. Can I call you? And I'm like, can I call you? Of course you can call me. <laughs> what am I going to do to you if you call me? I mean, <laughs> just pick up the phone and call me. I, That's you a know, valid it, point. It, it, it just, you know, and, and I and I had the same argument with my wife this week. You know, she, they're going back and forth with hundreds of emails over an issue that could be resolved by just picking up a phone and having a conversation. But you'll have situations where you have, you know, literally, you know, 10, 20, 30 emails going back and forth. And for, from my perspective, I think that delays stuff from getting done. It delays productivity. Yeah, um, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. But I think that that goes beyond just like business. I think it's actually become a cultural shift based on, you know, social media and the Internet and texting, you know, and I think that they, particularly the younger generations, right? I think any, you know, folks who were definitely like the generation following us have grown up with nothing but that in their hands. And, you know, I know my, you know, for my, my son is a great example. He hates talking to people on the phone. If his friends call him on the phone, he gets angry. He's like, why are you calling me? Just text me. What, what, you know, it's, it's, it's a, a cultural shift, I think. And I don't think that one's going away, to be honest. But your point is very, very valid, right? Sending somebody an email and say, hey, can I call you? Dude, you could have called me and we could have been done with the conversation in the time it took you to send that email and wait for my reply. <laughs> yeah, and, and the hard part is, you know, we all get tons of emails, whether they're marketing emails or internal emails, external emails. So things get delayed. So... You know, now you're waiting for somebody to respond to you, but they've got 10 other things that they're working on. Well, just call, you know, but it is, it's a different, it's a different mindset. You know, it's, I, I, maybe I am more old school, but I just feel like get it done. You need something now, pick up the phone and get it done. Yeah. Now you are definitely not wrong. As like you said, we, we tend to beat our head up against that wall when, when the guy on the other end just won't pick it up. <laughs> so, yeah. But, uh, okay. All right. So let's take a break here to uh, hear from today's sponsor. And when we come back, I want to get into some, uh, some of the practical concerns uh, surrounding the distributed workforce and maybe talk about some of the do's and the don'ts. So we will be back in just another minute, folks, with more of the Cattle Call Podcast. All right, everybody. Today's Cattle Call was brought to you courtesy of Zentech Consultants. That's Rocco and I. Uh, Zentech Consultants works with design and manufacturing firms to help our clients purchase and implement the software that they need in these complex industries. Uh, we provide a single point of contact for clients to buy, develop, and learn the most vital software systems for your specific needs. Uh, Zentech strives to be your trusted technology partner from your initial needs all the way through long-term support and training for your entire staff. So Rocco, why don't you tell them how to reach out to Zentech? All right, yeah, you can reach out to us through zentechconsultants.net. You can email us at sales at zentechconsultants.net. Or you can even call us, 866-824-4459. Excellent. We look forward to hearing from you all. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Cattle Call Podcast. So we're discussing management of the remote workforce in the design and construction world. Um, and, and I'd like to get into some of the practical concerns and, and where, we th where we see this environment going over the next few years. Um, you know, to start with, I think it's an easy thing to say that construction people uh, aren't going to be fully remote anytime soon. I mean, I think we all know that, right? Um, you know, while there have been a lot of advances, advances excuse me, in, in machine control and prefab work processes, we still need and will always need skilled tradespeople on site. And, and like I said, I think we always will. That's never going to go away. Um, having said that, though, I don't think that we need them on site 
six days a week as they have been in the past, traditionally. Uh, you know, listen, I get it, right? Pipe fitters need to be on the construction site to fit pipes. It's, it's, it, there's no way around that. That's what they do. That's their job. Uh, you know, the thing, though, is that we can reduce the hours that they're on site each week. Right? By pushing off you know, things like their reporting, their as-builts, uh, you know, submittal drawings, insurance requirements, RFI response times. You know, if we can push that stuff off to specific days, I, I think we have the possibility of giving trade people an extra day or two at home. Um, and I think that this is going to be particularly important as you know, uh, building automation and, and a lot of the, you know, the Internet of Things. All right, ramps up and really begins to keep pace with the automation levels we've seen in the manufacturing space over the last few decades. Um, you know, I, I do think that in the not so distant future, we're going to see the end of the 40 hour work week, right? Which, which really, to my mind, it's just a leftover from like the, the industrial revolution anyway. And I think that that work week is going to disappear. Um, you know, I think we're going to have to balance human work hours against you know the cost benefits that we see from automation and 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 hopefully we can find as an industry a better solution for this than we saw in the manufacturing world where you know hundreds of thousands of people lost their jobs and and their livelihoods um so Rocco what do you think I mean is is there a way to effectively reduce uh, weekly work times for even construction people right and, and, and maintain high wage jobs for skilled workers while still utilizing and seeing the time and cost savings of, you know, robotics and automation. I, I do agree with you, I, I think, but there, there's arguments to be made in, in, in the opposite, you know, spectrum as well, because I, you know, I, I think about, you know, you, you're adjusting your, your work hours, but now, you know, Tom is adjusting his work, or, work hours and Marsha's adjusting hers, and next thing you know, you're not able to communicate with one another because everybody's working, you know, disjointed hours. So that's, I, I kind of see uh, yeah. that as an issue. I mean, I, I can see that, all right? But I do think also technology does answer a lot of that, right? Because no one's ever truly disconnected anymore, right? You know, your emails are popping up on your cell phone. And, and that, that leads to other issues, right? Which, you know, hey, if, you know, should I be answering company emails or responding to things when I am you know, not quote unquote on the clock. I it, 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 I think it shifts away and it's less of a concern when you're not you're not an hourly wage worker. You know what I mean? When you're salaried and, and when you are, are making like a fixed or a set income, it, that's much easier. And I think that's also something that's going to have to be addressed, right? The concept of working hours and making things, you know, fair labor wages and so on for everyone. Uh, it's it's not a simple problem. It's, it's, it is a complex issue. Um, but all right. So, you know, I, I think this is where, right, we start to, to kind of cross the line into more of a political discussion, right? And, and I think that, uh -oh. yeah, here we go, politics, let's, let's annoy everybody, <laughs> all right? <laughs> so, you know, we're moving into this, and, we, and I think we have to start looking at ideas like, uh, you know, universal basic income, right, that was presented by, like, you know, Andrew Yang, uh, you know, who, by the way, Rocco, I want that guy on the show someday, so can, can you get working on him? I'd yeah, like to, yeah. yeah. Get him, him as a guest for day. next week. Yeah, just just reach out to his people. Have our people call his people. Okay. Um, cool. So, but I, I'm a big fan of Andrew Ring. I think he's a brilliant guy. Um, you know, and, and I know that for a lot of our listeners, right, you know, concepts like UBI, that smacks of, you know, socialism, and it has all kinds of, you know, welfare state implications, and I do understand that. Uh, you know, but, but I think following what we've seen happen this year, we have to acknowledge Right? That, that the old workforce methods, really, they're just not sustainable. And we have to look at ways of making work available to more people in a reasonable and sustainable manner. And the only way I, 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 that I see of doing that right, is through reduced work hours and some sort of you know, tax-funded supplementation for all citizens. Um, and I think if that isn't addressed, right, we're going to see a massive loss of employment in all industries, not just construction and design. Uh, you know, as you know, artificial intelligence and machine learning and the IoT, they're going to be taking more and more professional level positions, right? And, and I think that a balance of those two, and those those are good things. There's there's huge benefits to be reaped from those, but I think you've got to find a balance of the of of you know the human and and the mechanic, you know. Um, and I think that's something that we should all be pursuing 
as we move forward. Even if you think UBI is absolutely crazy, fine. Let's let's talk about other solutions, but let, let's just not ignore it and say we're going to do what we've always done. Um, you know, to my mind, uh, you know, businesses should be actively looking at reduced hour work weeks and higher pay to offset these problems in the very near term. Uh, you know, and, and listen, I know from our clients, right, the minute you say the term higher pay, management freaks out. All right, but look at it like this, right? If, if I pay somebody $20 an hour for 40 hours of work, or if I pay them $40 an hour for 20 hours of work, there's no additional cost, right? What it comes down to is increasing uh, productivity and, and getting the same amount of work handled in less time so that people can have that fair wage and, and be able to still have that work and life balance and, and, and the, reduce the stress levels, right? So, all right, so Rocco, right? You're, you're, you're the business major here, right? You're the business major in this partnership and I'm, I'm just the silly tech guy who talks too much. Um, what, what, are you, what, what do you think of my ideas? I mean, is this a, a viable approach or not? Oh, I don't know. It, you know, it, it, it depends on the industry it, it, for, for one, right? I mean, are you sure you're not a politician? You, you phrase every answer with it depends. You're not allowed to use that word anymore. I don't hear anymore. It depends. Give me an answer. <laughs> That's that run you for Senate, man. <laughs> but it, it, it really does. It depends on the industry. It depends on, on the individual. You know, I, I think there's a lot of people out there who are, who are just lazy and they try to, you know, cut corners where they can. And, and, and then there's people that are workaholics like mm -hmm. me who, you know, who works 60 hours I think week. he's implying that I'm one of the former, by the way, folks. Just in case you missed that. I think you just took a shot at me. <laughs> but I mean, so, isn't that, not, not to cut off your answer, but that, that's true today. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter. I guess what I'm kind of saying is that lazy people are lazy people. There are always going to be those people who are trying to get over and, and get something for nothing. You know, they're doing that today in, in, in the in-person work, workforce you know, work in tradition, they always have and they always will be, you know, I, yeah. I, I don't see how those tie together, you know, as I, cause I've heard, and, and I will let you get back to your answer. I'm sorry. I'm just saying, I've heard that many times as an answer. Well, you can't trust people. People will do it. Yeah. But they do that today in what we're already doing. So what does it matter if we change to a different process? Those people are going to cheat no matter what you do, right? They're cheating today. They'll cheat tomorrow. They'll cheat next month. It's, it's, there's always going to be that. So I, I personally don't see that as, as an argument against, but I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I lost my train of thought. I derailed you? <laughs> you did. You did. Oh, man. Now, nah, like I said, I was just trying to ask you, you know, whether or not you think that there is any chance for us to, to get to, you know, that reduced hour work with, with, with some kind of a, you know, a backing in terms of, of a UBI or some other similar process. I don't think it's a simple, I don't think it's easy to get there, you know, because mm -hmm. there's, there's so many different industries and, you know, well, that, you know, that one, that industry is doing it. Why aren't we doing it? So it's not easy to get to that point. You know, right. I understand what you're saying. I just, I don't know how we get there from here or here from there. Eh, that's fair. That's right. No, it really is not. There is no simple solution, but this is a very complex topic, right? Um, and and I'll, I'll say, you know, I think that a, a big hesitation, uh, you know, in moving in that direction from a management standpoint, and I think it's kind of what you were just saying, right? It, it's in a distributed work staff. Um, I think it's the perceived lack of control. Um, you know, executives do not like the idea of not knowing what their workers are doing or that, you know, they may be slacking off or being lazy on the company's dime, right? Um, and I'll tell you, from, from my standpoint, you know, the, it's a fallacy and I don't think it's, it's real. Um, and, and in my opinion, I think it's a terrible management approach. Um, and and here, here you go. I'm going to tell the listeners here, Rocco, a story poor Rocco's heard like a hundred times. Uh, because, you know, like I said, we've had this conversation many times here. So, you know, when I was younger, I was construction foreman, right, for a residential home builder, right? So I, I was running five crews across a bunch of different job sites. Um, you know, and I did this for a solid year. And, you know, the owners of the company were, were thrilled, right? Because I brought in every single project under budget and under time. Right? And finally, you know, they, they brought their other two construction foremen out to meet with me and the two owners, right, so that I could explain my process because they're like, they wanted everybody doing this. Like, you know, Jim, you're doing this great thing. We don't know how you're doing it. Explain to everybody so we can get on board. So, you know, we sat down in the construction trailer and I explained to everybody that my approach was really simple. You know, every day 
I gave each crew a target goal. I, you know, usually I told them something like, you know, hey, today I need you to get this house framed and, you know, the windows done on that one and the roof finished on that other one, right? So I told them that and everybody in the trailer in that meeting, they all nodded, right? They liked that. They, they knew they all set daily goals. So they were on board with that. Then <laughs> I told them, so after that, I tell my crew, as soon as you're done, you get to go home and I pay you for the whole day. You get done at 10 a.m., you go home and I'll pay you for a full eight hour day. Wow, uh, the owner lost his mind. You know, that meeting devolved into a screaming match, right? Where they threatened to fire me. They forbid me to ever do that again. And you know, needless to say, I quit like two months later. Um, but you know, the moral of the story here is the entrenched belief that you're paying your staff for their time. That's a mistake. I really believe this. You're not paying for their time. You're paying them for their skill and their effort. And I think this is especially true in the construction and design community. We're not factory line workers who are polishing car fenders, right? We don't need to stand in one spot and be, you know, quote unquote, doing things, right? You know, nonstop, right, to earn our wages, right? My, my, my crews, when I was running, when I was the foreman, my crews were twice as productive in half the amount of time and made the owners far, you know, far more money than, than they were expecting. But they put a stop to it because it, it violated their preconceived idea of how work should be done. And I think that's what needs to change. It doesn't matter if your project manager or your administrator works for three hours and then they take a two hour nap and then they work another two hours and calls it quits for the day. All right. The only question that I think people should be asking is, did he perform well? All right. Here, here's the takeaway phrase for the day, right? Manage what your employees produce, not how they're doing it. And I think that's important. So Rocco, you know, you and I have, you know, that's why I kind of brought up this topic today, right? You and I have butted heads on this in the past. Uh, you have been very uncomfortable with remote workers and contractors sometimes because you worry about them taking pay, getting paid when they're not working. Um, you know, has that changed for you? Are you more comfortable with tracking production over time or do you still see issues to my approach? I'm I'm more comfortable with it, but I do see holes in in the process. And mm -hmm. and like I said, it it you know it, in the example that I gave before. Okay, so so Tom doesn't work from eight to five anymore. Tom works you know eight to ten, and and then and then ten to two, and then four to six. So so now you have Jeremy working from eleven to one and three to five and. And, and so on. So now you have Jeremy trying to get a hold of Tom when Tom's taking a nap so that he can get his work done, but it, it, they can't get a hold of one another. So now you have delays in communication versus when you work with this, with a set schedule, you know that everybody's working on that set schedule and that work is getting done during those hours. So, you know, I think there's a breakdown of communication and a slowdown in, in, in production when everybody's not focused on, on more of a schedule. Right. So from that aspect, I do I do see holes in, in, in your theory. Okay. Yeah. And, and I'll say I don't agree with you. I don't. Right? Because I think, you know, in, in my mind, it all comes down to metrics and communication and effectively responding and replying to people. That's, that's one of your metrics. If you're not responding to emails for six and eight and hours, that's a problem. That's part of your job. Right? And I'm not saying that everybody should have like fixed time. You get off from three to five. You know, people are working. Here's your work day. When you get done, you get done. I'm not tracking to see. I don't I don't want, you know, plugins on your laptop to make sure you're working and so on. Um, and, and like I said, it, it comes down to, to metrics, right? I think, you know, if you set daily and weekly goals for your staff and you track their completion. And like I said, and one of those metrics can be, are you timely and effectively communicating? Um, you know, and, and, I, and I even think it's okay to make the goals that you set, make them a stretch, you know, w within reason, all right, you know, and push your employees, right? If you need a report done by the end of the week, just give them three days. Say, look, I want it by Wednesday, right? You know, if, if you need, you know, the footing poured by the end of the month, tell your guy I need it done in three weeks, right? And, and I promise you, your workers will deliver, right? In, in study after study, right, you know, people who are left to their own device, with a fixed goal and an obvious reward are almost twice as productive as people who are carefully managed without obvious reward. Right? In other words, if you let people set their own hours, work in their own way, 
and let them take off when they need to. Right? They will get double the work done in half the time. <laughs> right? um, you know, or you can stick to the old school thought process and they will drag their work out to fill you know, the, the, the 40 hours or 50 hours so that they always look busy and you aren't getting yelled at them. But you're only getting half of it done. Right? And, and I think that people need to decide what do you want right? as, as a manager right? to, you know, or, or a business owner. Are and you, what works best for your for your situation? Yeah. Because I don't I don't think that what you're describing works in every scenario. No, absolutely. But not. I certainly think that there are scenarios where you can try to apply what you're saying. Because I I don't totally disagree with you, Jim. You know, but it, it you you know you have to try it and yeah. and and assess it on your own at your own level. What does it work? Right, and and that's I think that's all I'm trying to to really kind of stress here today. I think that's a great point. It, it, there is no answer. This this isn't like everybody should do it this way. That's not what I'm trying to say in, in any way. But I'm saying that you should be open and, and actually try these different approaches. I think that's, that's the right answer. You know, because you're right. It's not going to work the same way for every company and it's going to apply at different levels. Some companies, it'll be, you know, 100% of their staff. Sometimes it'll be 15% of the staff. Some companies just can't make that work. You're absolutely right. Uh, and another point is I, I, I do think that you have to give people a little bit some, some people, again, going back to middle management and, and kidding around, I mean, what we were saying before, sometimes middle management want to have too tight a rein on, on their people. Mm-hmm. And you, you have to give some people, you, you, you have to give people some level of flexibility and, and trust and allow them to figure out some things on their own. I mean, I, I had an example just this, this past week in exchanging an email. You guys know we do a lot of online training here. And and I had a, a customer say, well, we can't, you know, we we can't move forward with the online training until we have everybody back in in in, in the uh, in the office. And and I said, you know, I respect your decision, but let me just ask you, why are you thinking that way? You know, here at Zentech, we do all of our training is done online, and we break our, our classes out into two hour sessions once a week. Everything is live; it's open to questions throughout. You know, so especially if we do a class one on one for your team your team's going to be going to have an open phone line or an open discussion with the instructor do screen share why can't we do it that way and you know and his answer back to me was well i need to be there you know sitting next to them and and you know and and making sure that they they that they comprehend it and it's like your your employees are not two years old i right. mean if they're not getting it they're not getting it i mean you know they're getting paid to be trained to learn but, you know, I mean, it's just it's a different mindset. Some people think that they have to handhold. And I don't think you have to do that either. If, no. you, if people in their are in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and certainly their 60s, <laughs> they should be responsible enough to, to be able to, uh, to to pay attention and get the work done. Yeah, you would think, right? Now, and, and you're absolutely right. I mean, I think that there's a lot of, of, of people who still have that, that control mindset. Um, and you know, for for anybody who's listening who is completely disagreeing with me and thinking, nope, you know, I gotta I gotta watch my people. I can't trust them. I think you need to make a decision, right? And and, and you have to decide what it is you want. Are you looking for you know a a happy, productive, profitable workforce, or do you want to hover over them and control them and have a bunch of angry, bored clock watchers? <laughs> uh, and that's your choices, really. And and I know which one I want, and it's why. You know, I you know we, we really are pretty liberal here at Zentech in letting our people handle their hours pretty much as they want, right? We try to just set goals and then expect them to be met because these are professionals. We hire good people. We expect them to do their jobs without, you know, holding their hands like Rocco said. You know, listen, like I said, me, and, and I am definitely more on the flexible side than Rocco, right? I, I personally, I know Rocco doesn't agree with this, but I don't care if they sleep until four in the afternoon and then work like mad for an hour to get the work done by five. As long as the work is done and correct, I'm good, <laughs> right? You know, and, 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 and I think, you know, to answer the question, you know, what if they aren't getting the work done, right? Then you fire them. <laughs> it's that easy. It's a simple risk-reward evaluation for both sides of the equation. Either get the work done or get gone. No hand-holding required. That's how I look at it. So anything else you want to throw in there, Rocco? 
No, I'd be interested to hear people's feedback That's, on this one. Yeah, we may be in a lot of trouble. We have people outside with signs and yelling at us. So just just email Jim or call Jim. Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My 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 email is Rocco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't you send them at me. All right, all right. That's enough of Jim's preaching at everybody for one day. So I think we can leave it there, and we will catch you in the next podcast, folks. We'll see you next time on the Call Podcast.